Hey everybody, welcome back. In a previous video, I showed you how to use a template to send an email whenever a task in Planner was completed. Uh, but this time, I'm going to show you how to start from scratch so that you don't have to clean up a template and you can really have complete control over the entire process and see how it's done. So uh, what we're going to do to get started is just sign into Power Automate if you're not already. And the most important thing about that is to make sure you're signed in using a work account and not a, a personal account, right? Because personal accounts can't access Planner. So once you're signed in with Worker School, we're just going to go over to Create on the left-hand side. And then because this particular flow needs to be triggered whenever somebody uh, completes a task, we need the trigger type to be automated, right? Because instant would be a manual. That doesn't make any sense. And scheduled, of course, doesn't really make much sense either. So in this case, we're going to choose Automated Cloud Flow. All right, for our title, let's just call it Send an Email When Planner Task is Completed. There we go. And then search for your trigger. Of course, that's going to be planner completed or something like that. And then for me, it's this very first one, when a task is completed. All right, so we'll choose that. I'll click on create. And we're halfway there. <laughs> now, uh, for our group ID, I'm going to choose my help desk. And for my plan ID, I'm going to use a plan called ticket work. So for you, just choose the group that makes sense where the plan is saved and then find that plan that you're trying to create this flow for. All right, and I'll choose my plan. There we go. All right, now next up, after that task is completed, this is when we need to decide what happens. So it could be post a message in Teams, it could be send an email, and of course for this video, we're gonna send an email. So I'll do new step and send an email. There we go, just make sure you use the Outlook send an email, the V2 here, not the teal one that just says mail, right? That'll give you the best shot of it not ending up in junk. <laughs> so send an email. There we go. And I'm just going to put myself in there as the recipient. And for the subject line, you can put whatever you want. I usually do something like task completed, colon, and then the title of the task. So uh, for that title, because I want it to be the exact title every time and not just a static value, we're going to start using dynamic content. And if you're unfamiliar with dynamic content, basically all it is is a way to plug in values from previous steps. So in our case, this when a task is completed is all the information about the task that was completed. And so we can pull the title from that. So I'm putting task completed, and then I'm going to choose title. Right, so whatever the title of the task is shows up. Now in the body, I might say something like, hi, comma, and then a couple lines down, the following task has just been completed. All right, and then maybe I do another couple lines. And for mine, I want to do title, maybe description, and when it was completed. Okay, so I'm just going to do three things for now. So for my title, we already know how to do that. We're just going to use the same thing we used in our subject line. There we go. Now description, you'll notice there is no description in dynamic content. The only thing that we have is has description, which is true or false. That's not going to help us here. So this is where we get into uh, one of the benefits of starting from scratch and not using a template. We can get some additional details. So right in between your trigger and this email or team step, whatever you chose there, choose the plus sign and then add an action. And we're looking for get task details. So you can type that in the search and just choose get task details. All right, and then for our task ID, the most important thing here is to go all the way down to the bottom if you have a bunch of stuff there and choose enter custom value, okay? Once you do that, your dynamic content should pop out to the right, and we're looking for the dynamic content that just says ID. Don't choose any of the other IDs, only the one that just says ID. All right, now if we go back to our email step and we click next to description where I wanted to put that, you'll notice we have additional dynamic content from that new step we just added called description. <laughs> so it's perfect, just what I wanted. Now for my completed date time, again, I'm just gonna use my search over here and choose the completed date time. So a very simple example, but it's what I want. So uh, I'm just gonna add some final formatting, just bolding these descriptors for each field, make it look a little more professional. There we go. And of course you can add additional details if you wanna put anything else you see over there. That's absolutely fine. Uh, some people like to put a link to the plan. So maybe you could go down a couple lines and say, view the entire plan here, All right? And I'll just go over and copy my URL for that plan. 
and then to create a link in a Power Automate email, we just select the linkable text, choose the link uh, icon here, and then paste the target. And I'm gonna have that open in a new window. There we go. So I've got, hi, the following task has been completed, title description, when it was completed, and a link to the full plan. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm gonna save that. There we go. And then I need to go to my plan the first time and I'm just gonna complete a task. So I've got this decommissions bucket and one task to do. Let's get something done today. So I'm gonna complete decommission server P134. All right, so that should trigger the flow. Now, just a note, the first time you run a flow like this, it does take a little bit longer that first time. So we're just gonna wait a little bit and then we'll, we'll pick up when it uh, actually triggers. But after that first time, it should be pretty immediate for this particular flow. So to monitor the, the status, I'm just gonna go back to the flow detail page now that I've got it saved. And I'm just gonna go down to the 28 day run history and hit refresh until I see that it's run successfully. All right, so I see that it's running, I see that it succeeded, I see that it took one second, it's pretty amazing. So now let's go and check it in my mail. All right, and there we go. I can see that the message, the title, that particular task didn't have a description, unfortunately when it was completed and a link to the full plan. So if I wanna test that to make sure the description's working, which of course I do, I'll go and use that link to make sure it works first, and then I'm gonna add a description to a task before I complete it. So this particular build server, we'll just go ahead and add a description here. There we go, we got a description. I'll close that now and let's complete it. And if this works, then hopefully in the next email, we will have a description. There we go, and we can see that second time it did run a lot faster, and there's that description. So just like we just did there, if you're noticing you have some blank fields showing up in your email, just first verify that the, the task itself actually had a description, and that'll help you make sure your flow is working properly. So good luck, have fun, and I'll see you next time.